Hey guys, it's Chris here. There's a driver that came from uh, the Netherlands and he came over to Orlando and he, uh, he asked if he can come along on a rolling CV interview. So I said, why not? So the format's gonna be a little bit different today. We're gonna see if we can, uh, we can find some, some, uh, some trucks to chase and uh, see if we can get a good, uh, get a good story. All right, by the way, that uh, I live on a cul-de-sac, so you see me roll that corner, there's a yield side on that corner. So I know you guys, you guys like to watch things. So you guys like to pick out little uh, little nuances. So uh, I figure I, I might as well tell you about that. All right, so uh, William doesn't know that the cameras are gonna be inside the car today. So um, we'll probably you know pick up a little bit where he tells me about what he does over in, uh, in the UK and uh, some of the things that he deals with as we uh, go out and find some, uh, some trucks to chase. How you doing, sir? Good, good, how are you? William. Hop on in. Welcome to, uh, welcome to the, the Rolling CB interview mobile here. Yeah, how long are you doing this on YouTube? The um, big rig videos? Almost two years. Yeah, about the same time as I started. Oh yeah, okay. I started about two years ago as well. Okay. What's the name of your channel? Dutch World Trans. Okay, so... So, kind of Dutch world of transportation. Okay. Now tell me about uh, driving in, uh, in the Netherlands. What do you? What type of truck do you drive? It's a Duff. It's okay. a cab over. Well, the trucks are a lot smaller in Europe. It's a cab over, two axle tractor, three axle trailers. A bit different uh, configuration than here. Uh, I have a uh, Packard engine in it, 11 liter, okay. uh, 440 horsepower. Okay. Well, what type of things do you haul? Almost everything that fits in the trailer. Really? Okay. Yeah. I have a current side trailer, almost everything that fits in, mostly pellets. Okay. All different kinds of stuff goes in and I uh, have about 15 drops a day. Really? Yeah. So, doing 15 drops, how many, how many hours are you usually working? I usually away from home for about 13 hours. What are some of the things that you really like about that truck? It's it's pretty agile. The turning circle is a lot smaller than the than the American trucks. Uh -huh. I like it. It's pretty compact. It drives really well. Um, what are the speed limits there? Every truck is limited to 55 miles an hour. Okay. A truck can go in kilometers, 80 kilometers an hour. It's about 50 miles an hour. Okay. But they're all limited to 90 kilometers maximum. Okay. Mine's limited to 88. Okay. That's mine. Alright, awesome. That's cool. Well, we got a little bit to get around this uh, slow moving vehicle here. Why don't you go ahead and uh, introduce yourself there and what you're running? Uh, my name is Junior. I'm from Henrietta, Oklahoma. Uh, they call me Stroker. Running a 359 short feet, 322 inch wheelbase, four and a quarter B model cat, no air to air, 13 double over, 306, two speed rear ends. Now, when I met you there briefly in the, in the parking lot of the Chrome shop, you're telling me some things about the truck and how long you had it for. What have you been doing with the truck? I've had the truck for quite a while. I haul cattle with it. Out of Oklahoma there. I'm originally from Missouri. By way of Arkansas and Texas, ended back up in Henrietta, Oklahoma, right in the middle of cow hauling country. Do you normally find yourself coming this, uh, this direction to haul cattle? Well, summer months they 
do the Florida cattle, I call them swamp cattle, but they may start moving them down here a little bit out to the 4th of July, and they run pretty hot and heavy up until about October, November, and it kind of slacks off. But the rest of the time, I pretty much run the Midwest up there, Kansas, Oklahoma, Missouri, and Texas, and a little bit of Arkansas, some New Mexico. I do that in the summertime, you know, like I said, I come down here and run these back up into the panhandle. All right, 10 4. Well, uh, when I pulled into the parking lot there, one of the first things I saw was your truck parked there along the side. It caught my eye. Uh, what are some of the things that you've done with the truck, and how many miles have you driven with that truck? This truck has 7,698,267 original miles on it. Uh, it's been painted once. It's got solid cherry floors in it. It's got two tone leather interior in it. Um, I've stretched it out, had the frame x-rayed, everything aligned on it. You know, it's, I've taken care of it, it's fed the family for a day or two. Well, it looks like the, a little longer than a day or two there. Well, I've been in this industry since, let me see, I drove my first truck in 1977, done some time in the service, and been at it ever since. What are some of the things that came uh, original in the truck, and then what are some of the things that you've done to it? Well, the truck came out original with the four and a quarter B model cat. The motor has no air to air on it. It's got the airflow over the top and in. Um, the transmission's been changed out. It originally came with a five and a four in it. The rear ends have been changed out in it. Uh, it's got a low leaf air ride suspension. It's been stretched out. You know, of course, it was painted. Done the interior myself. Done the floors myself. Uh, I've had my hands on pretty much everything you see. Now, is this the only truck that you've owned over that time? No, absolutely not. Uh, my wife, she owns a company, and, and we've got other trucks. We've had other trucks, multiple trucks on many occasions, so no, it's not. This one fits like a glove. Kind of lost without it. Most time I got my co-driver with me, and she's not with me this trip, but I carry a blue healer. I have Blue Healer dog with me too, but I wish she was here, but she's not. So, picking up with the question about the the move over law, and what are some of the things that you've seen four wheelers not do? I believe if there's an emergency vehicle on the shoulder or any broken down vehicle on the shoulder, I have always, over the years, from day one driving, made it a custom to get in the left lane as I pass them and then come back around. I believe it ought to be mandatory for everybody to do broke down vehicles or emergency vehicles. It shouldn't matter. You know, anybody can open a door at any time. The worst thing about the move over law is it's it's a great law to have and I believe everybody should get in that left lane prior to, you know, coming up on one or passing one. But the problem you have with the four wheelers are when you go to come over they cut you off and then they get beside you and you got nowhere to go and it doesn't work out very well sometimes. I'm going to ask you another question. It has to do with hauling cattle. There's a lot of guys out there that they like to make a transition from what they're doing now to maybe something else as far as getting into relocating cattle. Well, the first thing I tell them is everything that they know, they need to take it and throw it away because you've got to start all over. Hauling cattle is a whole different job all in its own. Uh, you know, driving the cattle, you know, they're always constantly moving. When you go to stop, you got to plan way ahead of time to stop, slow down. When you go to pass, you got to watch how you pass, you can't jerk. When you go to load the cattle, that's where it gets dangerous. Uh, loading and unloading cattle, I've been hurt quite a few times. I have, I've got friends that have been hurt. In fact, i got a friend, God bless his soul, all oh, two months ago, Mr. Kirkpatrick, up there out of Oklahoma, horn ran a, uh, cow ran a horn up through the bottom side of his head, loading and unloading. It's a very dangerous job, so you need to forget what you know and start over. That's unfortunate about your, your friend there. and You know, we don't think about it. I know I don't think about it that way. You do make a point there. You, you can't come into something with what you think you know. Yeah, you, it's, it's a whole different job, but, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a fruitful job. Don't get me wrong, and you've got to know what you're doing. Not everybody can do it either. Not everybody can stomach the job. Not everybody has got what it takes. I'm not saying, you know, you got to be a superman, and I'm not, got, I'm not saying that you got to do things that you ain't supposed to do, because you don't. Um, you just, you know, it's just a different job, different breeds, not for everybody. But going looking at your truck there, if you're at a 
at a truck stop. What are some of the things that people come up to you and start asking you about there? Oh, that's a pretty truck. How long is it? What year is it? Can I sit in it? Can I look at it? Can I take a picture of it? Um, I've only had one person ever want to take a picture going down the road of it or ever ride in it. Uh, that just happened to be today, but uh, everybody just wants to talk about it. What have I done? How old is it? Where have I been? How many miles? Just the general stuff. 10 four. Speaking of taking pictures of it today, you got uh, you got somebody riding shotgun with you. That's uh, William. He's from the Netherlands. William, if you can hear me, do you have any questions that you'd like to ask uh, JR about the truck there since you're sitting there? I think you caught him off guard. <laughs> we'll give him a few minutes to think, and if he has something, repeat the question that he asked, and then if you can answer it, I think that'd be fun for the viewers to, to hear. All uh, right. Well, he made a statement that uh, I'm a lot longer than they're allowed in Europe. You know, he's like 50-some foot in Europe, and that's that's uh, about as long as they can go over there. He said I would uh, definitely be illegal over there. And uh, he also uh, told me that, you know, they can go from country to country, except for Switzerland, they still have their border, you know, border checks there. question he goes how do I deal with the extreme traffic in and in and out of and around the cities well it's simple I always slow down about five miles slower than the speed limit relax don't force it let everybody go by sit there try not to get in the right lane try not to get in the left lane try to get right down the middle and just ride through town and watch way out in front of me on a distance but that's how I deal with it I always slow down and let everybody do the work and I just ease through Thanks again for taking a minute to, to come out there on the highway and, and let us get a, a good look at the truck. I appreciate you offering and, and thank you and, and I hope to see this on video and uh, my truck appreciates too. I just I just wish I'd had my dog with me today. Like you're feeling like you're driving a real machine. Uh, okay. 
because of all the noise that you hear. All the noise, it's everything's big, everything looks good. Europe is more compact, it's quieter, it's more about fuel efficiency and emissions and there's a big difference between a great old truck here or a European truck. Now he told us about his friend that's coming from uh, coming into town. He was about, I don't know, maybe two hours north, so he explained that his truck was just as cool as his, so uh, how about we go up and see if we can catch up with him and uh, get another rolling interview. That would be great. Awesome. All right, if you're ready, we can go ahead and ease on out. Oh, we don't? Phillips back there. You got that radio on? Yeah, that's all here. Well, uh, I appreciate you uh, pulling in there to that uh, truck stop there and letting me uh, tag along with you as you head down toward the old 75 Chrome shop there. Yes, sir. It's my pleasure. We spent some time with, uh, with one of your friends there on the road, Mr. Uh, J.R. Richardson, and he said that uh, you were coming down this way, so we figured we'd uh, head up the road a piece and catch up with you and and uh, check out the old truck that you're running. Great, I sure appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I'm going down here to see how he's doing. Uh, what, uh, what do you got there for a truck? Yeah, 2005 model flat top Peterbilt. Been customized a little bit. It was a stand up. I put a unicap on it and uh, stretched the frame a little bit. Made it easier to ride. A little bit of motor work, a little bit of paint. Make her easy on the eyes. <laughs> Ten four. Well, yeah, yeah, it seemed like you're kind of kind of skimpy on those details there. A little bit of paint, a little bit of motor work. Boy, I tell you what, when we got on the highway, it didn't seem like you just got a little bit of motor work going there. Steve Bradford up there out of Jetmore, Kansas, done my motor. He's uh, he's really, really, really good with a Caterpillar motor. He does a fantastic job. Man, I just can't say enough about him. Well, ten for it. What do you got for a motor in there, and what do you uh, what do you think you're putting down to the ground? I'm putting 1140 to the ground, and uh, I got a Caterpillar that's been Caterpillar Inc. certified, and uh, it's got a cam, big lifters, uh, bully dog manifold, and turbo. Uh, set up right. Uh, the ECM has been adjusted to for fuel economy and power, which uh, I got both. Uh, it just, it makes life a whole lot easier, you know, pulling a load of cattle, they're a little, uh, a little heavier once in a while. It makes life easy. Well, with 1140 horsepower, what's the fuel economy? Well, I'm getting 6.7 miles a gallon. Uh, I can slow down and, you know, uh, I, I guess pull so hard, but uh, shoot, 6.7, that's not bad for me. I started out at a 3.1, so 
So uh, I'm done with my fuel mileage on this motor, so. When it has to do with uh, Florida's law on, on moving over, what are some of the things that you see in, in regards to vehicles not moving over for, for safety? Uh, no common courtesy. They, they have to be first. Or, uh, I don't understand why. You know, people got their family in these cars. And, uh, if they were on the side of the road, you know, they, they'd want everybody to move over for them, but they wouldn't move over for anyone else kind of knock their hat off or blow it off one of the two. It's just common courtesy. Uh, I don't understand. 10-4. How long have you been trucking for? Uh, 38 years so far. And how, uh, how'd you find yourself in the commercial truck industry? My whole family's been in the trucking business for ever since I was a little bitty and you know, growing up around it, and uh, just being fascinated with a big truck, you know, I kind of got in your blood. I got diesel on me at an early age, and that stuff don't wash off. I heard that. For driving for 38 years, would it all, was it always cattle that you hauled? No, sir, I, I've hauled a little bit of everything, uh, except uh, gasoline and mobile homes. I don't like changing tires, and I don't want anything that'll blow up on me. But I don't blame you one bit there. Yeah, I'm all detached, reefer, dry van, uh, RGN, removable gooseneck, uh, flatbed. I, I've done a little bit of everything. My, my family wanted me to be able to, when I was young, if I walked up on a trucking outfit that I wanted to work for, if they said, can you do this, uh, I can do it. And there's a lot of folks that are out here that are doing well by themselves, and you know, and they're 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 getting the job done, and they're they're able-bodied, but it's apparent by the the camera that we have in the cab there that 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 I, you'd have to tell me what you'd want to be classified as or, or thought of as, but you you seem that uh, you seem different from the other drivers that are out here trying to work. Yes, sir. I'm, I am unique. Yeah, tell me about some of the challenges that you've been able to overcome. Well, uh, mainly, uh, you know, just other drivers. Now, when you say uh, dealing with other drivers, you know, explain that if you if you will. A bit of questions, you know, a lot of them are afraid to ask me anything. Most of them not, you know, they'll say, you know, how do you, you know, well, how do you do this? And I try to explain them, you know, if you ever had a two-stick, I had a two-stick transmission for a long time, and I was in an accident May 21st, 1992, and I lost my right arm, but I've been reaching through the steering wheel for quite a few years with that six and a four transmission, so it, I kind of adapted real easy. But uh, there's a lot of people don't know about a two-stick transmission, so they, they kind of scratch their head and kind of wonder how I do things. Now, I never did ask you what you go by on the radio. Uh, what's, what's, uh, what's your name and uh, what do they call you? My name's Randall Motley, and uh, they call me... I've been run by Oki Clown for all my life, and then there's a few of call me the one on Bandit. What's in for? If somebody came up to you and they said that they want to get their CDL, they want to get into a position where they're driving and they have some physical challenges, what would you want to tell them in order to encourage them? I would tell them don't let anyone tell you no. If they tell you no, tell them yes we can. Easy enough. Yeah, don't ever let anyone tell you you can't. Uh, throw can out the window. I can and I will. Is in your vocabulary. I can. I, I don't know who. You can give that to somebody else, but I can and I will is in my vocabulary. That's how I go about it. Ten four. I appreciate you sharing that bit of uh, bit of wisdom there. Well, they tell me I can. Uh, I got to prove it to them that I can. Uh, it it takes me a little bit longer now. Uh, I got to figure out a few different ways of doing things, but I get the job done. Uh, 
I try to do it the best I can. I've always been that way, but I try to do the best job I can do for what I'm doing it for. I don't know. I, I broke the old quite a bit when I was young and and uh, messed with cattle all my life. I raised on a farm and ranch. And uh, my first job was counting cows and opening gates when I was little. Me and cattle just get along. So you're, you're heading into Florida here and uh what are you going to grab and take back out of here? I bring a stalker feeder cattle out right, to uh, a feed yard called Con Gill, uh feed yard, and they'll grow them out there. It's kind of take them to a buffet deal, right? all the water and all the food they can eat until uh, they get big enough to go to slaughter. I was talking about on that radio deal. Ain't nobody said anything about that. No, we are on. We gotta give them a little bit of credit. We're on. We're on 22. I mean, if it would have been on other channels, they still. I don't know. I, I've run up on stuff like this before, but you know, they won't ever even say nothing. Yeah, it's in four. Now, well, let me. Since we're on that topic there, and we got us a little bit of a parking lot here. Uh, there are some incidents last year uh, up there in the, in the northwest, uh, not quite in the northwest, but it was wintertime, and there's a bunch of pileups and whatnot, and a lot of people said that if the radios would have been on, uh, maybe some people would have uh, would not have fared so badly. What do you think about that there? Exactly. Uh, that's, uh, that's a very good point. I mean, uh, if they would have used, you know, uh, communications, I mean, they, they would have saved lives in that deal. Uh, I, I've seen that accident and just, it, it broke my heart just to see and know that it could have, uh, most of some of that could have been avoided by telling people what, where it was, you know, the other side of the traffic telling them, plus the other people that are in the accident themselves. Uh, just a little common uh, courtesy of telling somebody what's going on. Yeah, and that's just it. Some people do say, well, there's so much rubbish on the CB nowadays, or I have my CB turned down, or I don't have a CB in the truck. And, uh, you know, I don't currently drive over the road right now, but I tell you what, if I did, the CB is the first thing that I want to have, and I'd have it up and I'd have it on. Exactly. Communication is what it's all about. I mean, uh, you know, people getting on the freeway, uh, people broke down on the side of the freeway, uh, you know, slow down like we're in right now. Uh, it would have saved some lives if they'd have just used it. Ten four. My radio is so quiet anymore. Unless you're in a parking lot of a of a truck stop, that's the only place they ever use one. Yeah, you're about right. You know, you can barely get a radio check there. But some guys have said that's why there's a squelch knob on it. Keep the squelch turned up. Exactly. If you don't want to hear it, turn it down. You know, or you don't have to hear it. But always, you know, kind of let people know what's going on. I mean. An alligator in the road, you know, a, a blowed out tire. It'll tear up a bumper and these new bumpers nowadays. You bend the bumper and get it into a tire, uh, a load of cattle on, you, you'll be out there in the trees and, you know, you can hurt somebody. I'll tell you what, I wish we had a couple more miles to roll along with you to ask you some more questions there. But I really do appreciate you stopping to let us uh, throw a camera there on the inside of the truck and uh, do one of these old random uh, rolling CB interviews. Yeah, I, I've had a wonderful time. I sure thank you for doing it. It was a pleasure meeting both of you. I'll turn for a road park in here for a little bit chat some more but one of the things that I didn't ask you was uh, what do you got for a wheelbase you said you stretched it out a little bit there yes sir it's 317 inch wheelbase and uh, a 53 foot uh, Wilson Treader there you go.